What I'm interested in your feedback is the mechanics of the script, the point of the story, things that I could add, things that I should take out, and I'm really looking forward to the, you know, evaluation. The part that I'm not embarrassed about is since this is going to be our representation at the International Speech Contest, I'm kind of happy to invite you in at this point when the script is still malleable and, you know, suggestions and comments can be woven into it. So, Michael Hamill, you know I'll take care of you. You know I'll take care of you, Michael Hamill. Mr. Ghostbusters. <laughs> I have a friend. My friend's name is Fred. Fred and I go back 25 years. We enjoy the same kind of music. We like going to ball games together. We like to drink beer at the ball games. Sometimes lots of it. 25 years ago, we were both sales reps. We were bright. We were articulate. We were pretty good at it. We were also easily distracted. We were more than a little bit hyper. We weren't really great at it. There were no trophies or European vacations. So now I look back and I look at the trophies and I think about the vacations to Italy and Hawaii. Oh my, how did we accomplish that? Fred and I learned two secrets. And these secrets are so simple that any fool could master them. I want to tell you about it. I was a manufacturer's rep. That meant that I had a company credit card. That meant the company credit card paid for the gas and bought the hotel rooms. Fred was, a manu was an independent rep. That meant that he hitchhiked in the passenger seat of my car and slept on the spare bed in the hotel room. Fred was obligated to buy all the beer. Hey Mike, you know I'll take care of you, right? The Odyssey ended in about the mid-1990s. Trianum, a specialty critical care distributor, was opening up an, a warehouse in Florida. Trianum was a specialty distributor company that went from zero to $500 million in 30 years flat with no more than 100 reps. They were led by a very charismatic president, Bob Byers, who made, whose passion was mentoring salespeople into being the best that they could be. He stood tall on his principles of honesty, integrity, and service. They offered me the chance of a lifetime. My alarm clock kept going off earlier and earlier every morning. I strove to make 10 contacts with people a day. I found a wife who believed in me. Meanwhile, Fred was not faring so well. The independent rough business was rough sledding. He was hanging on by his fingernails. He was learning to swim in the deep end of his scotch bottle. <clears throat> his fortune changed with a phone call. It so happened that Trianum opened up a territory in the southwest coast of Florida. Fred, this is not like the old days. All reports are, sub are admitted, are completed, and submitted on time. We get up early in the morning. If I refer you, Fred, I'm putting my reputation on what? Hey, Mike, you know I'll take care of you, right? Here, fellow Toastmasters, is the first secret 
that Fred and I learned about becoming successful. You need to surround yourself with people you admire, respect, and look up to. It's one thing to get up in the morning and go to work for something that you think you want. It's another thing entirely to stay in bed and let down the people that are counting on you. Fred amazed me. I'd wake up at 5.45 in the morning and turn on my computer, and there was Fred mail from an hour ago. Our camaraderie grew. We were synergistic. We pushed and pulled ourselves through the daily grind. And five years later, we're so proud to be standing shoulder to shoulder on the stage getting our first coveted President's Club trophies. During that same meeting, we were attending a training session, and a regional manager was giving a presentation on gold setting. This is where we learned the second secret. At the end of the presentation, Bob Byers from the back of the room. Who here thinks that making a million dollars is a good goal? I'll ask you. Who thinks that making a million dollars is a good goal? One, <laughs> two, three. Well, Bob explains. If you think that making a million dollars is a good goal, what I have to tell you is that most of you will never achieve it. And those of you that do will have no idea what to do with it once you get it. Making a million dollars is not a goal. Goals are making sure that you get up early enough every morning. Making sure that your reports are submitted on time. Striving to talk, make 10 contacts a day in your business world. Goals are, goals are attending 80% of the anniversaries and the birthdays and the soccer games with your family. Goals are exercising every day for at least a half an hour. If these are your goals, then you almost can't avoid making a million dollars. But if you don't make a million dollars, the rewards that you do get will probably be even better for you. Fred and I had an epiphany. We knew this secret because we had been living in the culture of that company. And yet, being put into words like that made it so much more real. The reason I tell you this story today, fellow Toastmasters, is that these two secrets are available to you today, right in this room. Look around. You are surrounded by friends that are worthy of your respect and are devoted to helping you draw the things out of you that are the best that you can do. The first secret. The second secret is I hear many Toastmasters say, I'm joining Toastmasters because I want to be a public speaker or I want to get a job promotion or a better job. Those are not goals. Goals are committing yourself to do 10 speeches in 12 months and completing the CC manual. The goal of Toastmasters is to attend 80% of your club meetings and complete a CL manual maybe every year. If these are your goals, then maybe you will never become a public speaker but the things that come to you will even be better for you. Mr. Toastmaster.